All right. Maintaining and increasing even your credit score uh, during your home search. So we're going to go over everything you need to know about credit, what to keep, start and stop doing. So a little bit about me. I've been in the business for almost 27 years and I've closed over 4,300 loans. My team and I see at minimum 60 credit reports a month. So just by default, we've become really good with credit. So we're able to recognize if someone is ready right now, or if they need a little bit of homework, and then we give a timeline, you know, that they're ready in the future. So it's given me some great working material over the years of just exactly to know what to look for. So I'm going to be giving you in this uh, probably 30 minute or so webinar tips and tricks that probably would take quite a bit of time to do an online search. There's just so much information out there. And my goal is to give it to you in just kind of a succinct platform, real facts, no BS. So that's what today is about. Now I will point you to, I do have a library of over 300 videos that I've been making for the last couple of years. I just released two to three videos a week, little by little, and bam, I've got over 300 now. So my goal with my library is just, it's like a parking spot for buyers and realtors in order to get real information uh, just from my accumulated experience over the years. And of course, it's all you know up to date. I'm always releasing new material. So please subscribe. I'd love it if you would. I release two, two videos a week. So ring the bell and you'll get notified. So I just go to Loan with Jen on YouTube and there you have it. All right. So what is a credit score? Got this directly from Wikipedia. It's a numerical expression based on a level analysis of people's credit files to represent the credit worthiness of an individual. Now, uh, it's usually used in a credit report um, typically sourced from the credit bureaus. So in our case, it is, we're going to go over how the scores are derived. I'm going to give you some, some real interesting history here in a second um, and let you know that not all scores are created equal. That's kind of the biggest myth out there that I'm going to bust today and, and give you the real fact on that. So a little bit of history, I loved researching this because it, I didn't know this really until, until I made this, this uh, uh, webinar a couple of years ago. So credit, uh, the use of credit dates back to the 1800s, actually. But in 1970, the Fair Credit Reporting Act was passed, requiring bureaus, uh, at that time it was called RCC, uh, that was the acronym uh, for the credit bureaus that later changed their name to Equifax. And later, so Equifax is the very first bureau, and then later Experian and TransUnion evolved. So there's three credit bureaus still today, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. Um, so the industry was looking in the, in like the late 80s for a common interpretation of credit and then this well-known tech company at the time that really, actually, they developed all kind of science tech. Like they weren't in the mortgage business or lending or anything. They were like an al- like a like a company of a bunch of scientists. And this company was called Fair Isaac and Company, and that is where FICO FICO is Fair Isaac. CO company. That's what that stands for. So they had developed this algorithm that helped standardize how companies look at credit. And so someone, I guess, in the finance industry kind of thought, oh, we can have this algorithm, this interpretation of credit that pulls information. And there you have it. So today, FICO is used by 90% of the top lenders. So if they don't use FICO, They're just a special lender that's private, maybe a private bank, but any lender that's that's doing the main loans, like all that 30-year fixed and stuff that you see on, you know, FHA conventional, definitely FICO is used for sure. But they're not, you know, we don't represent 100% of the lending. So there are banks out there that don't really look at the score. They look more at like what's on the credit. So I know that for sure, like usually some small local banks. 
Um, and it's interesting. I got back, I got in the business in 1995 and I remember we had to submit by fax a, a sheet that we had to fill out for someone's credit. And it took four to five hours to get it back. And I remember that I would be calling and I would be just itching to get someone's credit back in like hour number four. And I, and I didn't have it. And I remember calling and whoever was answering the phone, you know, whoever we used at the time, whatever company. And I was like, oh my gosh, I really need it. I really need it. When's it going to be here? And it would, we're, they're like, we're almost done. We're, they had to manually go out and collect all the info from the bureaus Um, and it would come back to me in that, that paper, you know, that's like green one line and white, the other with the preparations on the side. And it would come over that dot matrix and bam, I would have a credit report. So very interesting, um, scores actually didn't really become a thing. And until automation really took off after the year 2000, that's when it really started to get very, very automated. And we started to not have manual underwriting anymore. I mean, underwriting used to be when I got in in 95, like I would put a whole file together and color dividers and everything else. And I would literally like, sometimes I would drive to the office of the underwriter, whoever it was, and like hand them a file. So everything was done with a file. So I've seen the transition. It's been pretty interesting, but now everything for the most part is automated for sure. So the score is super important. Um, make sure that when you're on, just raise your hand or, you know, chat in the, in the chat or question button, glad to answer questions. All right. So common myths about credit. This is my favorite part. Cause y'all would be like, I wish I had a dollar for every time I received something or a question about credit that was like so far from what the actual is. That's kind of how my channel was born on YouTube. I wanted people to get real information. So The biggest one that I hear is if multiple mortgage companies pull my credit, my credit score will go way down. That is not true. So we're going to go through that here in the next few slides. You should never close an account. That's a myth. It's okay to have multiple credit cards because they have a zero balance. I pay off credit cards monthly, so my score should be great. The collection is small, like $50, so it shouldn't matter. And it's not going to affect my credit because it's only $50. So all of these are myths. And I, at the end of this session, you will be able to know why. Um, And we'll go through that, some real interesting facts right now. So credit, I, I just grabbed a lot of these from online. You can see that Some of them have recent credit as 30%. Some are 35. Another one is 30. You know, there you've got all these varying amounts. For the most part, they're pretty much the same, but not all credit scores are created equal. I will tell you that is definitely for sure. So this next slide will maybe or maybe not blow your mind, but there's over... 35 versions of FICO. Okay. That is a true statement. You know, FICO, Advantage, Bank Card Score, Auto Score, you know, all these different scores. So, uh, in fact, there's even actually a few more than this since I made this. There's a few more. And there, and there's always new versions coming out. So FICO, remember. Fair Isaac company is FICO will come out with a new algorithm. And when that new algorithm comes out, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, who governs all the loans that we do, they make all the rules. They may or may not use that new score. So I will tell you um, most, I would say 80% of the time, the score that clients call me with when they they you know call me for the first time and we go over and I say hey do you know what your you know you think your credit score might be and they say oh yes 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 here i got it right here you know everyone has an app on their phone or it's from their credit card or you know any of those varying online you know services that people subscribe to so everybody knows what they think their credit score is 8 out of 10 times it is not what the lender pulls So lenders all, 
the ones that use automation, we use the same algorithms. We have to. That's how we can sell the loans between each other. Mortgages are a commodity. They're a, they're a thing. They're an item. At the end of the day, it's a note of a certain percentage rate. And so the reason that you know lender A can buy the loan from lender B is because they know that the analysis, that the playing field of analysis was exactly the same. So a lot of these online companies, I mean, I don't know which of these scores that they're modeling off of, but it's very oftentimes not what lenders pull. Okay. So I just want to let you know that. Uh, And it's not that those scores are wrong. It's just not the score that we pull. That's just the bottom line. So that's why we encourage people like you've got to let a lender pull your credit because that's the only way we're going to know what your mortgage score is. Um, So here's the truth about credit inquiries. Uh, The bottom line is that there are three bureaus, Equifax, Experian, TransUnion. They are still around today, just like they were in the 70s. And the, the think of the credit scoring models as a filter. So with Equifax, we use one filter, Experian is another, and TransUnion is another. So there's these three filters that are filtering the data that all these three bureaus have. That's why there's three scores and there's the, the three scores are never, hardly ever the same, by the way. Um, the scoring range model that we use goes from as low as 350 and as high as 850. So I'll have a slide in a moment about how to know what's a good score. Uh, we use them currently, we use the middle of the three. So whatever the three, not an average, just the middle of the three. So if the middle is 720 of the three scores, let's say that's the experience score. That's what we use. So the best site out there that I tell people that is the closest to what we pull is myfico.com. Now, they're not paying me anything to say that. This is just a Jennifer statement. Uh, We have noticed that when people say that they've pulled on myfico, that that's just generically uh, closest to what we pull. There's even an app on, you know, the app store, I think that you can download that's similar to that. That's like my, you know, my FICO, I think. Um, Now, the, the main thing I want you to know, any inquiries into your credit in a 30 day period from a mortgage lender will only count as one. And Back to, I don't know if you uh, noticed back on these grids that I did back here. Uh, so credit searches, this like in this, I'm in this middle blue here, right in the smack in the middle. Uh, the blue is credit searches. Credit searches or credit inquiries are 10% of your score. So it's very, very small. Uh, and the higher your score is, the less it matters. So you're allowed to shop for a loan for sure. So there are controls in place so that you are not penalized for having multiple pulls into your credit. So not to worry. Now, what is a good score? So if we had a tier system, which we don't, but if we did, it would look like this. Tier one, the very best score is when your middle score, remember we use the middle, is above 760. So 760 and 850, the perfect score that I've actually never seen anyone have a perfect score, by the way, is exactly the same. So I get a lot of clients that they, uh, you know, they're very concerned. They want to be in the 800s, which is great. Definitely, it's great to want to have a score in the 800s. But 760, as far as pricing for loans, 760 plus, it's exactly the same. There's no benefit for being 830 versus 760. Now, everything else you'll notice goes downward in sections of 20. So 740, 720, 700, 680. When the middle score is in those different ranges, If we said that this was a tier system, which again, this is just me making it up so it's easier for you to understand, then that's what it would look like. So if we see a client that is in tier three, that is, actually, I'm going to pick tier four. We see a lot of people that are in tier four, actually. Um, Let's say their score is a 719. They are just one point away of 720. 
but the pricing on the loan for the interest rate and the PMI, the private mortgage insurance, if that's applicable in your loan, is very, very much affected by which bracket of which tier you could say you're in. So a 719 has a different rate and different PMI than a 720, literally one point difference. So that 720 is a threshold, 740 is a threshold, 660 is a threshold. So it's really important for people to get with a lender as soon as possible uh, in order to know, you know what, what area they're in and if there's any room for improvement. Um, that's really important to know. So before I go on, I always like to kind of just stop and ask if there's any questions. Again, make sure that you chat them uh, or there's a Q&A button and be happy to, to answer that. Okay, general basics in the mortgage lending. Now, these are current, you know, conventional and FHA loan amounts. So currently the max loan amount, not price, but loan amount for conventional loans is $647,200. Now, that's in most of America. The edges of America, like California and New York, New Jersey, have higher amounts because the prices are so much higher in what we call a high cost area. But this is most of America is in this 647,200 as a max. So for the most part, you can have down to a 620 as long as you're putting 20% down, which is an 80% loan to value. A 640, now on paper, you can have as uh, if you have PMI on the loan or if you're getting a second lien, like you're doing a first and a second, uh, PMI will allow you to have down to 640 a second lien down to 680. Now I will comment that just because you meet the numerical value that is listed here does not mean that the automated system is going to like it. So again, there's one thing to have a score on paper and then the other, there's a whole other thing that the, every lender has to run things through an automated system. We hook up right to Fannie Mae's portal and we get kind of a red light, green, well, really red, yellow, green light. So that's really, really important to know. And again, a reason to get with a lender just as soon as possible. Now, FHA loans, those maxes now, uh, at the time of that I'm recording this in 2022, is 420, 680,000, which is really, it's up a lot from where it was. So our company goes down to 600. Some companies go down to 580. Uh, when they have a 580 to 639, so again, 640 opens up a whole new pricing system. The rates, higher rates and potential fees, the, the lower the score is because it's riskier. It's, it's, a, it's more of a risk for the lender. So just be aware of that. At 640 to 850 on FHA loans, generally there is no difference. So it's interesting that on FHA, there's really no reward system for a 720, if you're the same as if you had 660. So um, that's just important to know. Now, jumbo loans, generally, generally 680 plus. Now, the jumbo loan category is where we see a lot of hybrid lenders, um, you know, banks, local banks, uh, regional banks, they might have uh, even, even uh, money managers. You know, a lot of people have, you know, a big bank with a, a, a investment account with a big whoever. They're not going to care about credit score as much. They care that you have assets with them. So again, jumbo is where we see a lot of variation between guidelines and score and, you know, all kinds of different things are possible. But the mainstream stuff that I do that's sold on the secondary market generally if you have below a 680, there's that's I don't have a loan for you. But again, there's other lenders out there that that might uh, rates might be higher. You know, I don't know, but that's something just to know for general general knowledge. Okay, so how many points anyway for different types of things? Again, this is accumulation of the Jennifer experience, 60 plus credit reports a month just from what we see. We also help a lot of people do rescores. So, uh, you know, we see, we will see a client and we will see that there's something that's a short-term fix. It's like an error that they can remove. I'll coach them on like, Hey, get us a letter saying that it's not valid from the creditor, you know, and we can do a rapid rescore. 
Um, so this is just what we see. Now, these are in the last, if these events happen in the last two years, that's what affects the score the most is a two year event. So the way, you know, just hitting the pause button for a moment, the mortgage score, if you call, there's nothing official called the mortgage score, but if there were the score that mortgage lenders pull looks the most, the algorithm looks the most closely at the prior two years because it's a predictor of what the next two years habits are going to be like. So a late payment or a lien or a collection 12 months ago will carry more points than a collection from five years ago, for example. Collections generally in a two-year period 50 to 100 points, one collection, whether it was $100 or $10,000. The the algorithm does not make a judgment if $50 is more or less important than $10,000. It's it's grading the derogatory nature of the collection. So that's really important for people to know is that, you know, I'll hear a lot. I'll be like, Hey, you've got a hundred dollar collection here. Uh, and that's something that we could do to improve your score. And they're like, well, what do you mean? It's only a hundred dollars. I'm like, well, unfortunately it's the act of the delinquency that's giving your points a kick, not that it's a hundred dollars. Um, so the, the more recent, the collection, the more points, Uh, We saw someone that had a collection within the last 12 months uh, recently, and it was a hundred points for sure. Hands down hundred points. Uh, Anything maybe outside of 12 months might be closer to 50 to 75. Uh, The same with lates, tax liens, anything derogatory is in that similar collection category, 50 plus points. If your credit card balances, so the next bullet point is balances. If your credit card revolving debt balances. That's like a visa, a department store credit card, a gas card. Those are all revolving. You can lower or, or, you know, increase or decrease those balances on a monthly basis. They're not, it's not a fixed installment payment like a car. Um, If you, if you're charging within a statement period, more than 30% of the limit, you will start to have points taken away for sure. Um, So that's the first thing we look at when people are needing to better their score. The first place I go hands down is revolving credit card balances. It's the largest area of opportunity for people. Now, more than three credit cards, uh, you start to get points taken away as well. So back to that myth, if you'll remember, I said that there's a myth that you should never close any cards. Now that did used to be a thing like back in the nineties. Like I remember that. And that is true that that is actually very antiquated information. It is not true anymore with the new algorithms. It it is bad because if you had financial trouble, you could literally be indebted and maxed out overnight and completely live off credit cards because you have 10 cards out there. Even if there's a zero balance, you can be indebted overnight if you have one main financial event that could put you behind, which means you could potentially ignore your mortgage. That, that's why the algorithm is tweaked that way. The more revolving debt you have or potential to have, even if it's a zero balance, you could be so indebted at some point in the future that then you're going to have problems making your mortgage payment. That's the way the algorithm is tweaked to think. Um, If you have more than one inquiry in the last 90 days from a different type of entity, like mortgage is one, credit card is another, um, auto is another. So different types of inquiries in 90 days, then it's about five points. Um, It could be more depending on if you have like 10 different types of, we've seen some people that it's like obvious they're out searching for credit uh, other than mortgage. And that's where we see a lot more points than five, but one isolated incident is probably on average five points from what we see. 
Um, a new account, some people don't really think about this. A new account opened in the last 12 months takes points away. And that's because it's trying to gauge what your new habits are. It doesn't, the, the algorithm really does not care that you have 20 years of excellent credit. When I mean, it does, but when you have a new account, it's saying, hey, we're going to rate you all over again. What if your habits have changed? So we had a client recently that had no, no fibbing. They had five new accounts between credit cards, installment, whatever, within a 12 month period. And their score was low. They could not get a house. I had to, I said, the only thing that you can do that I see as homework is time. Because when you hit that 12 month mark, you're going to get points back because you've passed the 12 months. So the grading system on new accounts is 12, 24, 36 months. So every 12 months, you start to get more and more points back. So that's why I will tell you the highest scores that we see are people that have had credit for 48 plus months. That's four years um, because they've had, they have more seasoned credit. So those are generally the higher credit scores. I'll be honest about that. Um, that's just what we see. So uh, any questions about any of this stuff? Again, just a reminder to hit the chat. Okay, how to maintain your credit and debt. So uh, starting from left to right, you know, definitely look for errors. There are, you know, credit monitoring systems or subscriptions that you can do and credit monitoring, all that. So you can just figure out what you want to do on that. Um, look for errors, definitely. Um, sometimes you'll pay something off and it'll show that there's a balance for two, three years later. It's because once you pay something off, that creditor really is not motivated to spend money to update the Bureau to be correct. I will be super honest with you. For them to update to the Bureau every month, it costs money. So once you've paid them, they're like, eh, we're going to put you in a little bucket over here. You're over, oh, you're over here and this not a client anymore. So they really aren't excited about paying money to the Bureau to update your account. So we will see clients that have mortgages or cars that show a balance even years later. But then I look at the date of last activity and it was like three years ago. I'm like, oh yeah, it's obvious to me that this is not, you know, we just need to get it updated on the Bureau. So there's no credit police that are looking out for the best interest of your credit. It just doesn't, it doesn't exist. So it's good to see for errors, accounts that might be paid off and get those things corrected. Um, and you can just do a simple a simple bureau, you could, you know, go online with all the bureaus and um, just say, hey, this is, needs to be updated and they'll get it updated. Um, so the second bullet, the gray box, I'll say um, to maintain your credit, be sure that no more than eight to 15% of your income, your gross income is towards debt. Okay. Uh, that's usually what's acceptable to lenders um, for the most part. We're looking at a whole debt to income ratio as a whole, but as a, as a generic, you know, if you just use 10% and said, okay, if my, if my, if my gross salary is 5,000 a month, you know, somewhere around $500 is kind of a max that I should probably have as, you know, between everything, car payments and all that kind of stuff. Um, keep balances. We mentioned it in the prior slide. Keep your credit balances to 30% or less of the available credit. If your credit card has a $10,000 limit in any one cycle, you know, from statement to cutoff date, don't charge more than 3000 as a general rule, but you don't have to go to the 30%. Like you actually, some of the best credit is with that you maintain like 10% or less. But 30% is, is still okay. But when you start to go literally 31% or more, the algorithm picks it up and you start getting points deducted. And when you get over 50, the point deduction is higher. And when you get over like 75 or 80, the deduction's even higher. And if you let your credits, if, if your balance 
for some reason goes over the limit, even by like $5, because sometimes a late fee will be tacked on there and it puts you over the limit. That's like a bullet to your score, even more points if you're over the limit. So really be careful if you're, if you're right up against the limit on these cards, uh, really pay attention to that. That's the quickest way to get your score down or get your score up. Uh, actually is by watching that you you're within that 30%. Uh, no new open trades. Um, really be cautious again. Uh, you know, more cards is not better. Uh, so ideally having seasoned credit, getting, letting it seasoned for that 12, 36, 48 months is the very, very best. And then definitely the green box here, watch the mail for anything that could turn into a collection, anything. I had a client actually today before this, this webinar, she's now under contract and she says, you are not going to believe I've got a hundred dollar collection. It was some bill. They double billed me. We thought we paid it. They changed account numbers on it, blah, 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 blah. Right. And it was the smallest thing. And like, she's totally on top of her bills. So I had to coach her on, you know, got to get a deletion letter, blah, blah, blah. We spent some time on it, but it can happen. So just watch and stay on top of things. Once a collection hits, it's very hard to get it off. So just pay attention um, to that. So uh, a very good question here, actually, in the chat that I'll answer is the 30% individual or collective? It is individual, the individual card. Um, and I will tell you now it's on a future slide, but the max ideal number of credit cards is two to three. When you start getting over three, you start getting points, points start to come off. Um, so just be, be careful about that. That was a, that was a great question. Okay. Tips to maintain your score. Look for errors on the credit report. Keep your balance 30%. Ideal credit is one or two installment accounts. Installment is like a furniture or, you know, star furniture or uh, uh, a car. That's an installment. It's, a, it's an amount that you borrowed and you have regular, the same payment every single month because that's the closest to a mortgage. So we see people actually have lower credit scores when they don't have any installment debt. So there's some people that say, oh, hey, my credit should be super high because I bought a car and then three months later I paid it off. So I'm showing the bureau that I paid off a car. I'm like, oh, actually, that's not great because you get more points from the repetitive, consistent discipline that you're showing the scoring system that you can pay bills on time. That's that's what the mortgage companies want to know is that you can month after month, month after month, discipline, be disciplined and pay things on time. So actually not having any credit is worse than having a little bit of credit. So caution about that. Um, and then, as I mentioned, two revolving accounts is really kind of the ideal, like just have a visa and uh, you know, I see a lot of people that have a lot of miscellaneous stuff like gas cards and all that. I get it. Points. Everyone has points these days, but if you're trying to qualify for a house, I'm just trying to give you the secret, secret sauce um, about that. So again, we talked about seasoning. So 12, 24, 36 months on that. Okay. I thought this was a funny meme. <laughs> this is welcome to my world of we have a clear to close and then we get alerted that the client applied for a, a credit card and they were trying to save money on a purchase and we have a new credit card debt. So it doesn't actually make the score go down in the short term. Once we are under contract and pull the score, we actually do not keep pulling it again, but we do get alerted when you have credit inquiries, because for us, it's a signal of new debt and it just causes a lot of scrambling at the last minute. It was a really funny meme to me anyway. So I was like, oh, I got to put that in there. Um, but things not to do when you're under contract or even when you've been pre-approved, do not open new trades. Do not get the discount on the credit card. 
you know, in case you've been pre-approved and you're not sure when you're going to be buying, if you go past, you know, 120 days, that's how good the credit actually is good for before lenders have to pull it again. So you just want to make sure if you buy in month six or seven, that when we do pull the credit score again, it's just a neutral event that there's no negative effect to your score because you didn't do any of these things. Okay. So please do not open new trades. If you know that you're going to be buying in the next year, uh, I, I, I get calls about, you know, Hey, I, my car, I've got to get a new one. Do just check in with the lender and just make sure that if, of how it might affect your score. Uh, don't get credit line increases. Um, I know people are trying to do that to get their percent utilization down, but when you do that, they make an inquiry into your score. So just be careful. And again, talk that through with your lender. Uh, hopefully it's me. <laughs> um, multiple increase in your credit with different types of credit. Again, credit line increase, new credit card, going shopping for a car, all these different types of inquiries can dampen your score. Uh, don't overspend on a credit card. Just try to lay low again, if you know that you're going to be buying in the next year, uh, because the, the, the algorithm is more favorable when you have month after month after month below the 30%, not just one month. It's the repetitive, consistent habit that you've got discipline. That's what's going to get you the better score. So before closing, please do not buy furniture, appliances, furniture. We know that everybody is so excited. We are too, but it's just, it's just going to create chaos um, buying things. And you just don't know, because then we're going to have to put it now on your application. We're going to have to count the payment. What if the payment of that furniture now throws you out of your debt to income? I mean, it's, it just gets really, really messy. So just go furniture shopping like the day after closing would be great. Um, but we understand people are excited, but again, just talk to your lender about it and how that might, uh, affect you. So that is all I have today. Uh, you can contact me here at my email. My website is loanwithgen.com, just like my YouTube channel loan with Jen. Uh, I actually just got trademarked. I just got my U.S. seal in the mail that Loan with Jen is now trademarked. So, um, but feel free to reach out if we can help at all. And uh, I will stick around for a couple more minutes for some questions here uh, for sure. If anyone has has questions, okay. Uh, can I post the seven credit tiers? Yeah, for sure. I'll go to that one. And I'm going to send this out actually to those of you that attended. I have your emails because you all registered and I'm definitely going to send it out. Okay. Here's the tiers uh, again. Uh, and again, it's not a formal term of like, oh, mortgage tier. But if I, I just did this for easy explanation, but it's, it's in lumps of 20. So it goes from, you know, 640. Well, I mean, you can do 622, but I just started at 640, 660, 680. So we take again, your middle score, and that determines what, you know, tier you're in for this purpose of credit, the uh, interest rate and stuff. So just think it's every 20 points is just easy to remember um, on that. So I hope that helps you. And again, I'm going to be sending this out to everybody that that joined today.